So today I'm going to be doing a fly tying tutorial, the first uh, for a very long time um, on my YouTube channel. And uh, the idea is that I will be making five of these tutorials, basically um, demonstrating how to tie five of my favorite flies. Uh, with these patterns I do 90 to 95% of all my fishing. So these are going to be both dry flies and, and uh, streamers. This first one is going to be a caddis dry fly. And uh, one thing I want to mention here already is that there are only a few uh, different materials I use for, for dry flies generally. Um, I don't use hackle because I don't think it floats as well as some other materials uh, and it doesn't look as natural as other materials. And for instead of hackle, uh, what I use is um, seals hair like this, um, or snowshoe rabbit like this. And uh, the reason why these materials are so good for for bodies and thorax is that they they don't soak in any water, which means that the the fibers themselves won't collapse. Uh, and they will retain their surface tension much longer than, than uh, if you would be using hackle or something else. Uh, I don't use CDC for bodies, but CDC works really well for wings. Let's go on with it. The idea between all these patterns I have is that they're, they have to be very simple and fast to tie because I don't, I don't like spending too much time uh, on the vise. Uh, and, uh, only like having these five go-to patterns also saves a lot of time on the river because uh, you don't have to spend as much time uh, choosing a fly and these are patterns that I really trust and uh, they are usually enough uh, for 90-95% of my fishing. Uh, so first of all we're gonna have a very simple body uh, based on snowshoe rabbit like that and for this I don't like to have too long fibers for the body so I will cut them about one centimeter long uh, so we have something like that and I'll thread this into the loop and then I can spread this around. And this is surprisingly easy to do once you have done it a couple of times. There are other materials that are much more uh, more difficult to work with. And once I'm happy with that, I can just spin them. Loop. So this is uh, basically um, equivalent of a, a body hackle and of course the more hackle you have uh, the better will the fly uh, float. And um, So another very uh, key thing with dry flies is of course that they have to float uh, and uh, it doesn't matter how how realistic they look because if they don't float then essentially you're gonna have a lot of trouble on the river on the bank um, fishing these either you have to try to dry them often or you just have to basically uh, switch flies and, and let them dry in between and this fly um, you basically have to treat once um, and then that's it uh, you can just uh, false cast and dry these very easily because they, the fibers themselves don't soak any water. That's kind of the trick. Uh, for the wings, you could be using CDC, but in this case I'm going to be using um, poly yarn. And of course you can tie this in lots of different colors. I usually brush them uh, like this so that, that, so that they are uh, well separated and fluffy, uh, like that. 
I usually trim at the front end like that so it's easy, easier to tie in so I leave a couple of millimeters for the head and then I just tie in this and I use quite firm wraps because also a key with these fly patterns is that they have to be durable um, and that's it for the wing we'll make another loop here and we'll add some more snowshoe rabbit and I will do the same thing here um, I will remove the under fur and here for the for the thorax I usually want these to be a little bit longer um, because this not only allows the fish to, to float very well but they also imitate legs so they here it's not a problem that these fibers are a little bit longer I do the same thing as before I spread these fibers out evenly um, and for thorax obviously I don't use as much as I used for the body by the way I use um, nano silk basically for all my uh, fly tying it's made by Semper so if you can find those um, it's, uh, it's quite difficult to find them and uh, I have a friend in Czech Republic, Jan Siman, who, uh, from whom I, I, I buy my, my nano silk and other fly tying materials as well. Um, so once I whip finish um, I can trim the, the wing and the wing shouldn't be much longer than the hook um, because otherwise it can get stuck inside like that when you're when you're fishing and the shorter it is the, the less likely it is to do that and you can of course trim these um, on the river as well uh, what I t then, then try to do is that I brush all these fibers that I have um, on the sides um, and basically when I apply floatant and the one floatant that I, ha I have found to work really well with most of my flies that are uh, based on seal's hair or snowshoe CDC and this uh, poly yarn is dry ma magic uh, it works really well for uh, for CDC as well, uh, uh, unlike other floatants that are that are not like powder or or something you dip the fly in. Uh, and when I when I do this in the river, I stroke these fibers up like this. So basically, the underside of this fly will be quite flat, so it will sit nicely on the side. Uh, on the on the surface and this basically will float extremely well and uh, you don't really have to do it doesn't have to be more complicated than that to tie a very good um, caddis pattern that is uh, easy to tie and floats uh, really well and it's, it's, uh, it's very realistic at the same time so this is one of my go-to patterns. I always have, always have tens of these in different colors um, with me on the river. So that's it for this tutorial and I'll be getting back with uh, some other uh, patterns as well uh, shortly.